rather than listening to it, I know it all and trying to apply against something that you already know, comparing it, just try to listen it from an open heart. Because if you read Old Testimony, do you remember how it says that people used to live seven, nine hundred years? Do you remember? Yeah. It's kind of like that. You, it's like, what? People are living seven, nine hundred years? It's impossible. Well, same thing in Mahabharata. Because Vedas, back five, first of all, Mahabharata is older than 5,000 years old. That's how old it is. And back then, people were very spiritually advanced. Some yogi monks and Vedas were, who are like wisdom monks, they were meditating not for 100, but sometimes for thousands of years. 1,000 years they were meditating. That means they were not eating, they were not drinking, they were just meditating and getting all of this knowledge from Creator, from God. And some of the knowledge people are saying that they still cannot comprehend because it's so advanced. One of the things that I want to share with you in one of the spiritual books says that our spine, for example, um, get sick not because of the bones or the muscles, but because of our lifestyle, our stresses, and our colon. None of the doctors will say anything like that, but this is not about Mahabharata. I'm just sharing. There's 2,000 different spiritual books, and the knowledge there is just very advanced for us even now. But, but also what I'm trying, uh, I wanted to mention, is in Mahabharata, it says that it covers not only the problems on earth, but the Vedas and yogi monks were seeing the galaxy and other planets. And Vedas believe that when we're born on earth, we actually come here because we get punished. <laughs> because if we're looking at it, this is heaven and this is hell, Planet Earth is not even in between. It's a little bit above. And that's why we have a lot of suffering here. But we can achieve living on uh, planet Earth like we almost live, on, live in heaven if we can conquer our thoughts. Basically, if we can co conquer our mind because our thoughts gives our reality. But there's also other Vedas who were saying, no, we come to planet Earth in order to overcome our lessons and exam, and basically we get punished. And so some of you will feel that, yes, we're here because we're punished, and some of you will take a theory of a knowledge that, no, we can make it here and live a really blissful life. The choice is yours. So there's two kind of division slightly here in Vedas. And so also Vedas believe that, again, when we die, we go to other planets if we pass the exam here. And if we accumulate it, what do you think? What we have to accumulate while we're living here in order to raise to other planets that are like heavenly like? Do you want to guess? Self-mastery close it's a gratitude 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 is the access to how long you stay pretty much if we're talking about in christian language in heaven but in vedas mm -hmm. they say other planets so if you constantly complain you pretty much will stay there for a week or two and then your soul will reincarnate and come back to earth if you're constantly grateful for even some of the struggles that you have in life, but you are appreciating, trusting, surrendering to Creator, and you're grateful, you have the gratitude, you're practicing it, you can stay there for hundreds or even thousands of years. That's like being in Hawaii in the best <laughs> wellness center, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Heavenly, beautiful space. But for that, we need to have a gratitude. Um, also, the timing... Uh, which is very important at the end of the Mahabharata, they talk about it, but I want to mention it now since it's in the space. One minute in heaven, it's 1,000 years 
in the planets like hell and 100 years on the planet Earth. So the timing is very different. And at the end of the Mahabharata, they talk about it uh, when Yudhishthira only stays alive and he starts looking for his brothers and wife and he found them not in heaven and he was very surprised. And he was in heaven only five minutes, but when he found them, they were there already somewhere else for thousands of years. But now I'm going to start breaking it down and explaining. Now, there'll be a lot of <laughs> Indian names that will be very hard to remember. So if you want, write them down. Otherwise, you'll get very quickly <laughs> confused. So Mahabharata starts um, with... And let me look up his name because I think I might be confusing his name. Uh, I think it's Vyasu. Ah, but before I go there, do you remember we covered in our previous meetings that Vedas believe there, there's four different layers of society? Um, the lowest one is Shudras, uh, those who are working and serving. They could be athletes, they could be singers, but they're mainly helping others. Then there's Vaishi. Vaishi are the businessmen who are salespeople. They're responsible for the economy. Then the third ones are the kings, the warriors, kshatris. And so in Mahabharata, it's basically the book talking about war. Families that gone separate ways. The two families were start fighting each other and it led to the biggest war on the planet Earth. Basically, um, 1.6 billion people died in this war in five days. And that was on the field of Kurushetra. And a lot of Indian families in India don't keep the book of Mahabharata in the family because they believe that it will cause the fighting in the family. So they read somewhere else, but they don't keep it in the family at home because the, the book has a lot of scenes of war and a lot of conflict. And then the first layer, it's Brahmins, people who are priests, who are teachers, who came here to teach others. And so um, in a lot of Mahabharata, they talk about the role of a warrior. And back then, 5,000 years ago, the warriors, um, they were seeking an opportunity to bring justice in order to die as a warrior because it was considered to be a shame and a curse if a warrior dies peacefully in bed. Like, there's no other shame than just a warrior, true warrior that was helping his student princes and kings to learn how to be a warrior. And then they end up not in a war. And so, by the way, Vedas are saying we need wars in order for kshatris, who are the warriors, to go to war and die as they meant to be. And that's why people are saying, oh, there's a war in Ukraine and Russia. But Vedas believing that we need wars to cleanse the society. And plus, for kshatris, and there's 10% of kshatris on the planet to go to war and to do the justice. And so back then, kshatris were um, defending dharma. Dharma means faith, but also means religion, but religion not the way we're hearing it now. It's spirituality, um, the truth, the truth about creator. And so if they were saying someone who is doing wrong, it was an honor to them to go to fight them, even if it meant to be killed. And so one of the yogis, I think his name was Vyasu, if I... I'm wrong, I'm going to uh, let you know shortly, but I believe his name was Vyasu. So he was in a different planet. And while another yogi monk was meditating for hundreds of years, uh, and he was about to end his meditation, but he didn't know that. And so this yogi monk, with the sense of humor, was talking to other yogi monks that were walking, and he saw his uh, baby cow. And he took this baby cow to himself, and when this yogi monk who was meditating, coming out of the meditation, he saw that his favorite 
uh, cow who just gave the birth and he knew that will be his favorite baby cow was gone, he curses all of this wise other young yogis and the curse was in a such a way that they would have to be born on planet earth and so the moment they found out that they will be born in a few days they run to the goddess ganga ganga is a river in india it's also considered that she lives in the other planet and she was in the other planet and they come to her there were i think four or six of them i don't remember i read it two years ago and they say ganga uh, vyaso um cursed us and so please do something so we don't go to the planet earth we want to stay here <laughs> and ganga was very kind and she said no worries i'm going and she was planning to go to earth and she said it's okay i'm gonna help you i'm gonna go to earth i'm gonna marry a king and when i'm gonna be pregnant I'm going to give you a birth, but then I'm going to strangle you in my own river. And so when you, when you die, you'll go back to this planet. And they said, oh, that's wonderful. But this yogi monk that cursed them, he allowed it to three other yogis, but not the ones who actually stole the baby cow. Is it confusing so far or you're following me? You I'm following. It. You're following. But, fabulous. Okay. And so, and now we're going to the planet Earth. What happens? One of the Maharaj kings is um, traveling and hunting. And he meets this beautiful Ganga. She's now in the planet. She came from the other planet. She's now on the planet Earth. He falls in love with her and he proposes to her. He said, would you please be my wife? And she said, I will marry you. However, if I'll marry you and I do something unusual and strange, you got to give me a word that you're not going to question me. And King agreed. They married. And next year, she gives birth to the first boy, the first king. The king is so excited. He's like, yes, I'm a father. He holds the baby. She takes it away from him, goes to the river and drowning and so she drowns the first baby the king is shocked all of the people in the kingdom are shocked what's going on with a queen ganga and she does this every year the king is excited second baby she goes and drowns the second baby the third one she drowns the third baby the fourth one she drowns the fourth and king is getting more and more and more depressed by the time she's ready to drown the ninth baby, because the baby is born, he, and right next to the river, he chasing her and tells her, Ganga, why are you uh, drowning my children? These are the future kings. And she looked at him and she said, do you remember? You told me that you're not going to question anything I would do because you broke your word. This baby, I was not planning to drown. I was planning to take him with me and give him the education. But because you broke your word, I'm taking this baby to other planet for 17 years and I'm going to give him the best education. And at 17 years old, he'll come back to you. The king is very depressed. Is like, what have he done? And then she explained while she was drowning these kids because they were actually the yogi monks from the other planets. And so he realized that he really messed up. But now he's depressed, alone, no child, no ganga. But a few years later, he meets another woman that he falls in love. And this, her name is Ambika. And Ambika is gorgeous she is a daughter of a fisherman she's not a queen she's not a ganga but she's so gorgeous that he proposes to her but when he proposes to her she comes to him and says well but if i marry you and i'll come to your uh kingdom everybody gonna look at me as a servant and he says why well because you already have your first son and your first son will be the next king. And then who am I? I'm just going to be servant and my children that I'm going to give birth to going to be servants as well. And so she was very, very proud. And she said, that's why I'm not going to marry you. 
And so the king, if he now marries her, he will break the word and the order of things. But he is so depressed for two, three months. And at this point, his son, who is 17 years old, comes back from the other planet. Ganga let him go because he got the education. And now he understands that he will be the next king. But his father, who is Maraharaj, is very depressed. And he's like, father, tell me, why are you so depressed? And finally, father, a few days later, says, you see, if I'm going to marry Ambika, I will have to make her kids a king. And you deserve to be a king because you are my first son. And son says, you know what? No, I'm not going to be a king. He talks to uh, creator God himself. And he gives a word that he will never marry and he will never have children. And that means he will never make love to anyone. And then he goes to Ambika, proposes to her, and they have a wedding. And Ambika gives him three sons. And the first son, because she broke the law of the way things were supposed to be, because Brishma, who was Ganga's son, supposed to be the next king, she has birth to three children. By the way, they couldn't actually personally get pregnant. There's a long story about it, how she actually got those three children, but that's too long. Otherwise, I won't be able to cover at least the main points. But anyway, the first son is blind. And his name was Tritarashtra. Tritarashtra, blind man. And he was so attached to the crown so attached he wanted to be a king he couldn't wait until he'll be old enough to be a king and that by the way was his biggest curse because the kingdom was having so many so many issues but let's continue so what happens um let me think about it because there's so many things where do i want to go um tritarashtra um decides to marry um, Gandhari. Gandhari was from a different kingdom and when Gandhari came to Dhritarashtra, blind man, on the wedding night she thought, well my, and by the way she was scared of the dark, it was her biggest fear, and her really really evil uncle Shakuni was constantly making a comment, you're going to marry this blind man, what a shame. And he was causing a lot of problems. It's another reason why this war happened. And so, but she tried to be, she was very, very um, spiritual and believed in God Shiva and was uh, meditating and praying every day. And on the day when her wedding was supposed to be, she thought, well, my uh, husband is blind. In order to understand him, let me try to cover my eyes so I will honor him. And this was her askeza. So she covers her eyes, goes to the wedding, and when everybody's servants tell Tritarash, the blind queen, that your wife covered your eyes, he got so angry. He's like, I was hoping that you will be my eyes. And here you are, you're covering your eyes. And how can the rulers really rule if they're both blind? But at the end, it was actually going to be very helpful at the war. But for now, he's very, very angry with her. And so they have a wedding. And parallel to it, give me just one second. There's another kingdom. And in the other kingdom, there's this little girl, 15 years old, Kunti. And Kunti, we can compare her to almost like a Virgin Mary. Throughout the whole 16 books in Mahabharata, she just suffers, suffers a lot. But she also meets this <clears throat> wise yogi monk who tells her, I'm going to give you the special mantra. With the special mantra, you can have not just children, but children of uh, God himself. But she thought he's just joking around. She, she went to the river. She just said this mantra. And all of a sudden, the God of Sun shows up and he says, here's the baby because you read this mantra. And she said, but I'm 15 years old. I'm not married. I cannot have baby. And God of Sun said, well, you have a choice. Either I'm going to burn your entire town and everyone there or you take this baby. 
Well, she had no choice. She took this baby and his name is Karna, the son of God, uh, God's son, right? Uh, Indra. Indra or no, no, no. Uh, Suri. Uh, God of son is Suri. And so Karna is his son. But is she now going to bring this baby to her father and the kingdom? What do you think will happen? 5,000 years ago. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So she puts a baby in a basket and let it flow. And um, the baby end up in a family where a husband was a servant to this king, Tritarashtra, who was blind. And they were, the husband was um, taking the king around in the carriage. And so I found the baby and they were raising this uh, little boy who was born with the shield of gold in his chest and belly and with the earrings. And this earrings meant that if anybody will try to kill him, there will be immediately protection shield around his head. And if anybody, any arrows will try to kill him in the chest or belly, immediately there will be protection of a shield made out of gold. And so Karna was the first um, reincarnation of the Suri, God of Sun. And so Kunti left him, went home. Uh, but um, let me think, let me think what happens next. And Kunti, okay, now Kunti gets married to a um, brother of blind man Dhritarashtra. And now there is becomes this main division that most of the religion in Hinduism, in Vedic, in Yogi, gonna be talking about it. Now, the Pandu, who was very saint-like, very... Um, who were practicing dharma, who was honest, who was a person of integrity, who was always following what he's supposed to do. So he marries Kunti, this little girl who just gave her son away on the river, but she stays virgin. Even though she had the baby, she still stayed virgin. But Pandu made a mistake in the forest and he accidentally killed a deer that was reincarnation of another yogi monk. And this yogi monk, while he came alive, he also cursed Pandu. He said, you will never have kids. And so Kunti marries Pandu, but Kunti had this mantra uh, that was giving her babies. And so she was reading this mantra and she got three sons. First son was Yudhishthira, which is reincarnation of a god death. However, god death in a good way. The death um, represents honorability and very uh, straight and honest honesty that is not shakable. Yudhishthira would never lie in no circumstances. Second is the god win, Brima, who was very big and very strong, it was impossible to win him in a battle. This was the second son. And the third son, Arjuna, when you're gonna be reading the book, uh, Bahatvat Kita, it's the conversation between Krishna and Arjuna. Arjuna was a reincarnation of God Indra. And Arjuna is the strongest warrior that no one could win. So as Karna, do you remember the son of Sun? He was also a very strong warrior. And so Kunti got three kids. But Pandu, this very honorable king, who's supposed to be also a king, but he is just a second brother of Dhritarashtra, blind king, marries a second wife. And the second wife also cannot make love. And so she cannot have kids. And so she asked Kunti, could you please give me the mantra so we can have kids as well? And Kunti says, okay, I'll give you one mantra only once. And so she reads the mantra and she gets twins. 
Um, and the twins were the fourth and the fifth son of Pandu. And they were um, the kids who knew how to heal uh, bodies and mind naturally, using kind of almost like natural um, Ayurveda. They were medicine boys. And so these five brothers are now the good side of the Pandu family who are very, very righteous, very sp spiritual, and who were practicing dharma. Now, on the other side, Dhritarashtra, a uh, blind king, and Gandhari trying to have kids, but it's not happening. It's not happening, and it's not happening, and finally she gets pregnant. But she is now pregnant, not five months, not nine months, not ten months, not a year and a half. She is pregnant for two years, and her belly is so big that she cannot move. And old Ritarashtara, who is the blind king, says, I need a son who will be my heir, who will be a king after me. And that's all he talks 24-7. And her belly is so big, and uh, Dhritarashtra's Brahmins, who are the priests, were telling him, you're not going to have one or two or three children. You're going to have 101 child. But think about how can a woman have 101 child? It's practically impossible. And so he's really, nobody can understand how can she has 101 child. And finally, her maid, um, Gandhari, who is now blinded, who is always walking blinded, her maid starts to hit her <laughs> um, with a, a wooden stick, a large wooden stick, her belly, so she can start have a delivery. But when she has a delivery, it's not going to sound well. Mm, she just has lots of pieces of meat. So it's pretty dramatic. But yogi monks come and the priest and they say, well, it makes sense because how can Gandhari have 101 child? It's impossible. So they take these pieces of meat and they put in the container and they start to grow. And after nine months, that becomes 101 child, one daughter and 100 boys. Now, the oldest of it is Duryodhana. Duryodhana was a very mean and very cruel, and all of the brothers were very mean and very cruel, but he was the worst one. At age six, he was showing the signs how he wanted to kill the Pandu. Brima, the second son of Kunti. And so that's where the problem begins. They live in the same household, but Kaurav, Tritarashtra, um, Gandhari, his wife with blind eyes, and all of this 101 kids hate these five brothers of Kunti and Pandu's second wife, I can't remember her, her name. Every month, they do something in order to kill those five boys. And so they have a horrible experience in this kingdom. So as Kunti, she's constantly crying and trying to protect her kids. And so I'm trying to think. There's so many stories <laughs> how they send them to the forest and how they get them out of the kingdom over and over and over again. But at the same time, Krishna, Krishna shows up and starts to support Kunti and five brothers, uh, Pandu brothers. And it gets to the point where Krishna starts to talk through Yudhishthira, the oldest son, who is supposed to be the future king, and Arjuna say, this 101 cousins of yours, brothers, they made out of the kingdom so much evil, the way they're treating the servants, the way they're treating the people in the kingdom, they're so evil that it's time for you to start punishing them. And this punishment will have to be in the form of war. And so slowly but surely, uh, everything starts to prepare for this biggest war in the world. But Arjuna and Yudhishthira constantly brushing Krishna off and saying, no, they're our cousins, how can we do this? 
and at the same time um trying to remember their grandfather's name do you remember the ganga son who was 17 years with her and came back and who's supposed to be the king he taught them how to be warriors and he is constantly telling them how to follow karma and five brothers pandos are getting educated by drona really powerful warrior yogi teacher who is teaching them how to follow dharma how to battle correctly how to die with glory and etc and duryodhana is constantly the oldest son of 101 kids break the laws breaks the dharma and etc and so eventually what happens krishna pretty much um helps Arjuna and Yudhishthira come to the conclusion that they have to come to the war before because oh for, forgot the main part one time Arjuna met Draupadi beautiful beautiful lady and when he met her he brought her to his mother Kunti Kunti was cooking and did not see that Arjuna was talking and introducing her to his mother. And during that moment, she said, well, I hope whatever you brought with me, you will share with the rest of your four brothers. And the moment she turned around, she sees that he came with the woman. And that means whatever the mother says, that you have to follow it 100%. And that means for the first time in history, Draupadi marries not just Arjuna, but all other four brothers and basically they have to share her every year and this is never heard in history but it had to happen but one time when they brought her to kingdom do you remember the mean uncle uh, Shakuni he says Yudhishthira who was the um, the reincarnation of a god death let's play with me a game and they used to play the game of it's not stones, the bones. And Yudhishthira never played in his life. So he would be very horrible. And Shakuni was the best player in the world. And Yudhishthira, because he cannot say no, it's disrespectful to say no to an uncle, start playing. And as they were playing, he says, okay, let's play now for your future kingdom. So he loses. Your kingdom is going to be mine. Now you're going to lose the first brother, second, third, fourth and even Draupadi, his wife. He loses everything. And uh, Duryodhana, who was the first son uh, of Dhritarashtra, blind king, starts making fun. And he says, now we're going to make you naked, dance in front of the whole kingdom. But as she was wearing sari, and they start to undo her dress, Krishna saw that they were making um, fun of Draupadi. And he made her dress um, like millions of miles long. So no matter how much they were trying to uncover her, they couldn't do it. And at this point, five brothers Pandu finally, finally, after so much um, pain that they've gone through this 101, 100 boys of their cousins, finally made the decision that yes, it's time to go to war. And Draupati, by the way, uh, came... She was not born as a regular death. In Veda's knowledge, it says that if you want to achieve something, you sometimes do a ceremony called Yagi. Yagi means you put the big fire and you start putting a lot of, um, it's not butter, but it's butter-like oil and start reading mantra over and over and over. And one of the kings couldn't have kids. And so out of the fire on the third day, two kids showed up. Draupadi was one of the uh, kids, and she was reincarnation of one of the gods and another brother. And so Draupadi was also very beautiful, um, a daughter of one of the gods. But at the same time, she had a very sharp tongue. She was always making fun of um, Duryodhana, who was the mean cousin of Pandus. And so finally, uh, Pandu brothers decide, yes, it's time for us to start the war. And so they start building their armies. And Krishna said, 
I'm gonna be on your side, obviously. But at the same time, I'm not gonna even pick um, any weapons. So the battle began. The grandfather, who was the son of Ganga, had to take the side of mean cousins, even though he believed in Pandus, in five brothers, because he did not fully, clearly understand Dharma. He was almost like an old school. And Krishna came and was saying to Arjuna, and that's what will be Bahatvat Kita about, uh, Krishna was, will be telling Arjuna and their brothers, you gotta go fight your cousins. And all of the uncle and all of the grandfather and all of your other teachers who don't fully, clearly understand the word harma, what is the true faith? We have to take the old tree out in order for a new tree to grow because dharma was twisted under the kingdom of Tritarashtra blind men and those kids of his. And Arjuna, because he was a warrior, he could not understand that he was also weak. He was afraid to go to war and kill his cousins and his grandfather and uncle and etc. And Krishna was saying, your warrior, it's your duty. You got to do this. And so the war began. After the war, pretty much on Kaurav side, on blind king's side, everybody, everybody dies except three people. It's yogi teacher's drona son, Duryodhana, the meanest son of his, the first son, and, and someone else, I can't remember who it was, honestly. In Pandavas, all five brothers are alive, but all of other people, uh, their teachers are dying. Karna dies. Do you remember the son of Sun? He dies. Uh, but the grandfather, who was Ganga's son, he was with all of the arrows in his body, but when he was born, um, Ganga said, you gonna die only when you choose to die and from whom you want to die and one of the women and that's a long story how he was in a way for her to get married it's a again i'm not gonna go it's a very long story but she cursed um uh pima the grandfather uh ganga's son she said two lives from now i'm gonna come in the battlefield and I'm gonna kill you. And when she was coming in the battlefield, he could not raise his arrow against a woman. And so she allows other people to shoot at him, not shoot, but with the arrows. And his whole body covered with arrows and he's laying three days on the battlefield, but he says, I'm not gonna die until I learn who wins. And only when he learns that the Pandu brothers won, he chooses to die. Um, well, again, there's a lot of details and a lot of uh, ugly details, how the word proceeds and who and how kills who, I'm not going to go over. The main point is that Pandu brothers win the battle. However, uh, there was this part where, when do you remember I told you three people stayed alive on Kaurav's side, and the war is not finished yet, 99% finished. His mother, Gandhari, who covered her eyes with, the, uh, with something in order to be blind, not to see anything, she decides that she's going to take, uh, she will open her eyes in order to give all of her askeza, all of her love and protection to her older son and so she says to Duryodhana go to the river wash yourself and come to me naked and then I'm gonna do something that's gonna help you to win the battle but Krishna knows about it 
And when he sees Duryodhana walking naked to his mother, he says, oh, you're walking naked? This is not a good sign. Cover at least your genitals. This is so disrespectful. And so Duryodhana thinks, well, this is kind of disrespectful to go for his mother to see him naked. And so he takes the leaf and cover his genitals and his hips. And so he comes to his mother and mother asks, are you naked? And he says, yes, I'm naked. She opens her eyes and she almost like scans like an x-ray his body. By doing that, she fully protects his body from any kind of weapons. But at the same time, because he has the sleeve around his genitals and his hips, now he will be vulnerable there. And the next day on the battlefield, when Pima, second son of Kunti, uh, takes kind of a big hammer, starts to hit him, no matter where he hits him, there's no damage. But finally, Krishna tells him the only way you can kill him is by hitting his hips. And so he hits his hips over and over and over until he dies. But when uh, Gandhari learns that this is how Krishna tricked his son to put a leaf over his genitals and his hips, and there's kind of somewhat, not really celebration, but the meeting that the war is over and all of the mean people are dead, she says, Krishna, I'm cursing you because you took away all my sons, all the people in my kingdom, because 1.6 billion people died. And he, she says, I am so angry. All of my askeza and my motherly love is going to curse you. In 36 years, all of your family tree going to die. Your kingdom will be saint. And so are you. You will be gone from here. And then the moment she says, everybody's saying, how could you do that? Krishna was the kindest person. He had to create this war in order to cleanse, in order to cleanse the planet. Because again, Krishna's goal was, because uh, again, going back to explaining the galaxy, in Vedas they're explaining that, uh, let me draw this. They look at the galaxy this way. This is the center of the galaxy where Creator lives. When we as a planet get closer right here to Creator, we are experiencing a good periods in our lives as Earth and people. The further we are away from Creator, the time changes, the more, not devil, but the demons come to planet Earth to rule. And so when that happens, Reincarnated gods come to earth to take away good people like Pandu brothers to other planets. And so Krishna had a plan to cleanse the planet from people who had no dharma. And the moment she cursed Krishna and his family tree, she said, oh my God, what have I done? Please forgive me. I am so sorry. And he comes and hugs her and he says, you know what, this had to happen, and I'm grateful to you. I fully understand that you are a mother and what you're feeling. You're also helping for my time to end here. Because Krishna, when he was helping Pandu brothers to go to war with other demons in Mahabharata, and they were killing the demons themselves, all of their wives, had no protection. So Krishna really had 16,000 wives. <laughs> Not really like he was sleeping with them, but they were under his protection. And so um, 36 years ago, in the reality, yes, his all of the family tree had to end and uh, the life on earth ended for Krishna. But at the same time, for these 36 years, uh, Pandu brothers were ruling the earth and dharma was restored. But at some point, they also felt that it's time for them to leave the earth. And they start climbing the mountain and getting closer to the river. I can't remember, there was a different river that they were getting to. And in the process, 
Pandu brothers were dying. And only Yudhishthira, who was the oldest brother Pandu, with the dog, got to the river. And at the river, one of the, again, yogi monks and saints showed up and said, well, I can take you to next planet, to heavenly planet, but only you, not with your dog. And Yudhishthira said, no, this dog was with me the entire time. He went through hell and the war. I'm going only with the dog or I'm going back. And he said, you passed the exam. You are going to the next planet. And so he's the only one who end up actually in the next planet, like we'll call it a heaven. And then he was surprised. Here he is walking in heaven, but who is he seeing there? Duryodhana, the meanest brother that he was in war with, and all of his hundred mean brothers, his uncle, his grandfather, all of the people he was fighting, but he cannot, he couldn't find his brothers and he couldn't find um, Draupadi, his wife. And he was very surprised where they are. And so he had to go all the way down to the planet like hell. And then he found them there. And he thought, why, why? This is so unfair. They followed the dharma their entire life. And he learned that their brothers and Draupadi did not accumulate gratitude. And they did not believe that they were reincarnation of other gods. And that's how they were punished. And even though Duryodhana all his life was so mean, he was very grateful for the kingdom, for the life that he had, and he accumulated the gratitude. And so to me, the end was in a way shocking, but there's also something that we have to think about. And when um, Pandu brothers saw him and Draupadi saw Yudhishthira, they said, thank you for coming. At least we can at least breathe the fresh air because it was so unbreathable in this planet similar to hell. And we were here for thousands of years. He said, I was just 30 minutes in heaven. And 30 minutes in heaven, it's like 3,000 years in the planet like hell. So that is very brief, very, very short version of Mahabharata. Of course, there's so many, so many, oh, so many different stories. I cannot even, this is probably only the fifth <laughs> of Mahabharata. Um, but they also say that Mahabharata should be read. You cannot um, rely on the second or third or fourth source. Um, because when you read it yourself, the way you absorb the knowledge is the knowledge of this Vedas um, monks who were meditating for hundreds of years, some were thousand years, in order to write all of this knowledge. So, for example, if you follow the celebrity, yes, you're going to get entertainment, but also you're absorbing their energy. Not very healthy energy. That's not going to get you to moksha um, liberation. Because the goal of why we're reading the spiritual books is to accumulate the knowledge. So we will not be reincarnated over and over and over again to have the last life, or at least less lives in the next life. Um, and so I'm here to just try to motivate you to read this epos, really spiritual books yourself, <laughs> yes. <laughs> because when you are reading them, you actually touch the wisdom and the knowledge that is very saintly, very powerful. And in the process, that's where you actually see, because in every family dynamic and relationship, you see so much of how Kunti serves her husband Pandu, how Pandu serves her, how all of them, how they talk to each other, the husband and wife and wife and husband. It's all about service of love, trust and surrender. It's so beautiful, the relationship. I think Mahabharata got me to the point of fully surrendering and trusting my husband. Husband says, I trust. I surrender. 
he knows better. He is the leader. And I'm always slightly below him. And it's okay. And the beauty of all Vedic books, they share, you serve and you trust 100% your husband. And husband serves and trust you 100% because we as a women, we see the future. We see the faith of where the family goes. But the husband is day-to-day -day protecting, leading, protecting, providing, they're doing their duties. And it's so well written in all Vedic books. But in Mahabharata, especially the relationship between Kunti, who is like Virgin Mary and Pandu, and how much they wanted to make love, but they followed karma because he was uh, cursed. And but at the same time, she has this mantra in order to create kids, and they're not even kissing. They are very resp res respectfully serve each other every day. Very very powerful. Any questions? I was spellbound, actually. I felt almost like a child. <laughs> I was like, what's <laughs> um, I also forgot. I mean, I mean, I haven't shared many things, but the one in particular. At the end of the <clears throat> war, uh, Drona's son, Drona was the teacher of all children, 105. And he was very respectful yogi warrior. And his son, when he learns that his father is dead, Duryodhana is dead, his hips were broken, and it, they were tricked because they were very hard to kill, Krishna a little bit twisted something in order to make them die, basically. He was so angry. He came one night and he killed Pandu's old children, Draupadi's children while they were asleep. And when Krishna came and saw that because they went to meditate in Himalayas, Draupadi and all five uh, brothers, when they came and learned all of their children were dead, they were very angry. And Krishna cursed him. He said, you wanted to live so badly that you're now gonna live for thousands of years and you're gonna get really old you will be with scars, bleeding, with blisters, but you're still not going to die. And sometimes when people are in Himalayas, are still yogis, go and meditate there. Sometimes they see a very old man. And how you can tell that the person is kshatri, warrior. They have a very long legs and very long, long hands, arms. And they saw very old man with blisters, with scars. Um, who is very old but has this long legs and long arms and they believe that this is the son of Drona who is still cursed, who is still meditating there, but he will not die. Many people experience him there in Himalayas and he's always in a meditative state. He's never coming out of there. At least nobody saw him coming out of there, but people believe that he's still there. And also, do remember when I mentioned uh, son of son karna there was a point where he had to give his shield and his earrings to indra but indra in return gave him the ball that no one could win that ball because every time he would try to kill someone he will kill uh, and they also believe somewhere hidden in himalaya his shield and his earrings so many many expeditions people are trying to find it in himalayas so this again says that this is not a fairy tale. Scientists look at it as, as a mystified thing, but it's not a mystified. That's how it was 5,000 years ago. And, but it's hard for us to comprehend because it was just so long ago. Because we look at life at one dimension and Mahabharata shares it in five dimensions in all galaxy. So... <laughs> <laughs> that is in a nutshell Mahabharata but by the way all of the Vedic books are 
very beautiful and very spiritual in, their, in nature. But because, again, Anya, you're planning to read Bahab, uh, Bahadvat Gita, and Bahadvat Gita has the core story of Mahabharata, 200 pages is Bahadvat Gita, but the rest is the battle. Yeah, it's, it's very long. Yeah. yeah, this is what I've learned. Yes. But honestly, it's not so easy to, to read, uh, but this is probably, you know, a different language. Uh, now, now I know more the background of the story, but yeah, yes. uh, yeah it is uh, not so easy to understand it. It will be it will be much easier for you now, so you will understand yes. why there's a battle, why Krishna is saying to Arjuna, "Go, go, kill your cousins," yes. and they will <laughs> be telling the you all the names of the cousins, and I don't remember hundreds of those uh, names, only Duryodhana, the older one. But believe it or not, if you read this book in your native language, there's different translation. Try to find the closer one to the original, without. Because, for example, Sai Baba um, interpret the Bahatvat Gita, and it's now not 200 pages, it's 1,000 pages. Uh, okay. There's different religious figures that came, and they translated Bahatvat Gita. So try to find the original one, 200 pages, or like closer to that. And then it will be much, much easier to read in its origin, without their interpretation and saying, or why Krishna said that, and there's like 200 pages about why he said that. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And when you read these 16 books, yeah, some of the shlokas, shlokas is the poems, there's 10,000 uh, shlokas in Mahabharata. And by the way, most of the yogis 5,000 years ago knew it by heart knew 10,000 shlokas by heart because their mind was so clear because they were following the dharma, they could memorize it. For us, it's now there's so much effort because if you read a shloka of Krishna, even one that is eight lines, there's so much to think about it, so much to think about it. And so just try in Bahatvat Gita, just reading it, digest it because there's so much wisdom in each shloka. It's Really beautiful and of course authentically we need to read it in Sanskrit but who knows Sanskrit language it's only one percent of yogi monks now and priests in India in India people don't know Sanskrit it's a language of priests but even if you know a few it's a little bit helpful in Vedic knowledge they believe that if you read Bahatvat Gita with an open heart it's enough for you to get to know Krishna get to know his wisdom, the meaning of your purpose and your life. And once you read it with an open heart, you're going to be repeating the mantra. And there's a specific mantra that is uh, four uh, lines that I can remember now. I can send it to you ladies later. But pretty much it's all mantra. And then it will be natural as you're walking through life, you'll be repeating this mantra. And before you die, if you repeat this mantra, you pretty much guarantee the room to go to the uh, heavenly planets. Because again, you will be able to awaken through that book if you read it with an open heart. That's what Vedas were exp explaining, that this is the main book of Vedas, Bahatvat Gita. And that's why I thought, is since you're reading it, you got to understand Mahabharata. Otherwise, it will be very hard to read Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> You'll be very confused, like, who is Duryodhana? Who is Draupati? Who is Pandu brothers? And Brima and Bhishma and, <laughs> and Drona and Karna and etc. Yeah. So, are, is there like a first book that you read? Like, are they in order? Yeah, there's 16 books, and Bahatvat Gita is somewhere between the middle and the end. But you can just read Bahatvat Gita. Just Bahatvat Gita. But if you get Mahabharata, it's 16 books, they're pretty big, it's gonna take you a while. <laughs> That's why I decided to share. Again, this is a brief, but um, there's a lot of stories how, again, blind king, Tritarashtra was sending Pandu brothers to forest once and second and three times for 15 years to 20 years or 50 years 
and they couldn't see anybody. They were not in kingdom. They were just surviving there. There's so many stories behind it. And in order to do that, you just gotta read the whole book. Do you remember Karna, who was with the gold shield and earrings? His mother and father were not kings, but he wanted to be a warrior. He knew that he wants to be a warrior. And so one day he ran away from his parents and decided to lie to one of the yogi monks in order for him to teach him how to become a warrior. So he came pretending that he's a Brahmin. And Brahmins and warriors can be taught military skills. And so he came mean bold and says, yes, I am a son of somebody <laughs> uh, who is a Brahmin. And so he was teaching him for many years and that's how he became a really great warrior. But one time when they were meditating, he got beaten by scorpion. And when they came out of the meditation, the yogi monk looked at him and said, you were bitten by a scorpion and you're still sitting. He said, yes, I didn't want to disturb you because you were meditating. And in that moment, he said, you lie to me. You are not Brahman. And only Shudra or a Kshatri can stand the pain for so many hours. And he said, get out of my place. So again, remember the Shudras, Vaishis and Kshatris and Brahmans, all of these four layers. You can easily, monks could tell to which caste do you belong if because Brahmins are very fragile in health. And how can he stand the scorpion, you know, for so many hours if he's a Brahmin? And he knew he lied. And so there were a lot of stories about the difference between, again, all of this forecast as well.